Good morning to you, wherever you may be in the world today. Uh, Alan Clements here uh, from Santa Monica, California, United States. Today's talk, today's sharing um, in support of the people of Myanmar. this ongoing military coup d'etat instigated by the senior general Meng online and no doubt his superior behind the scenes, Utan Shui, supported by a group of other men in high-ranking positions in the country. A lot of money, no doubt, behind the scenes, a huge uh, support from Putin in Russia and Premier Xi in China. Uh, today, uh, it would be unfair not to say I'm a bit disheartened. I don't mean to project this onto the people, the courageous people right now in Burma, but there's no way to deny the authenticity of being human. I've tried. It's a failure. It's led to arrogance, drug addiction, and terrible other behaviors, both towards myself and others. Um, I'm disheartened, pissed at the free world's bullshit response to the crisis. I mean, it's a fucking SOS, man. <laughs> it's like, it's like I want to just say, fuck you, Biden. Fuck you, you know? Sorry to be so explicit. Fuck you, Modi in India, you pathetic wimp. The, the Asian countries? Indonesia? What? Let's hold them accountable to free and fair elections as the terrorist organization taking over Burma right now have so-called promised? What are you drinking, man? What Kool-Aid are you thrown down your throat. Which, which version of Big Brother are you ingesting? I mean, where is their morality? Where is their stature? Where is their fucking dignity? Where is their leadership? Where is their decency? Where is their regard for the universality of human rights? Where is the bond of democracy? Where is the family, the United Nations? pathetic. I don't know about you, but it's just, it's just pathetic. And would I say this to, to the former President Obama? Would I say this to his wife, Michelle? Would I say this to George Bush? Would I say this to his wife, Laura? Would I say this to Biden and the Vice President? Would I say this if I had a few minutes of time on the Senate floor in the Capitol building? You can damn well bet sure I'm saying it today. I'd say it even more directly to them right in their heart. Fuck, man, where are you? This is a democracy, a child. It's your daughter, SOS, Amber Alert, 9-11, terrorist attack. Don't listen to the bullshit language of distortion out of the fucking country of Myanmar. Where is leadership today? That's what I want to say, right? Okay. Blah, 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 like our beautiful Greta Thunberg at the United Nations. Blah, 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 blah to 193 fucking uncivilized nations. Blah, we're going to a brick wall of self-annihilation called extinction. Guess what, dickhead? It's not going to affect your family, okay? The rest of the human beings, everyone's going to die except your family, okay? Blah, 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 blah with your magical thinking and endless rhetoric of eternal economic growth and sustainability and as Derek Jensen recently wrote in bright green lies blah 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 I'm looking at the world media I wake up all throughout the night like most people concerned with Burma right now in the world those of us who have some heart I'm not blah 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 and it's like fuck man where are you ASEAN <laughs> The G7 is like, where are you, man? 
Justin Trudeau of Canada, where the fuck are you, dude? Australia, where are you? America, where are you? United Nations, I read your statement. It's not blah, blah, blah. It's a very beautifully articulated statement, but it's textbook response. And it's fucking, man, without any kind of moral Viagra, dude. I'm sorry to say it's fucking wimp, limp. The world's response is pathetic. And if I were in Burma right now, and I feel like I am, I feel like I belong to these people, don't you? I feel like I belong to the culture of civility, not just Myanmar and all the 135 ethnicities, but it's like, man, these people are ruby. I mean, why do you think Winston Churchill's father and governor general of India back in the 1800s saw Burma as this, this gem that he wanted to deliver to the, the white supremacist priestess in London? And so he went there with his imperialistic forces and said, let's conquer the ruby. And they fucking took 17 million autonomous Burmese people with their 135 different ethnicities and 100 different languages and all the different religions and said, guess what? You are slaves of the white supremacists now. Woo woo. Bullshit, man. Fucking dick toxic masculinity. These guys have limp short dick syndrome. Sorry to be so blunt, but I grew up in a military family. I grew up blunt. Blunt is cool, man. It's rap mixed with reality. How do you get through without like taking a gun and wanting to go like, fuck you, man. Okay. Let's just do a Malcolm X here. Let's just do a World War II on your fucking idiocy, your impotence. Let's do a a shakedown, a struggle session with you, Biden. Okay, hey, get it. Get it. Burma's a family, okay? I'm, I'm in your fucking face. A struggle section like C does to people. When are you going to act, dude? When are you going to act, dude? Here, open your mouth. Here, put some ecstasy in it. Put some fucking ayahuasca in it. Put some acid in it, okay? Let's do a clockwork orange on your fucking idiocy. That's a far better response than like, oh my God. Uh, M- Modi is like, well, uh, we're the biggest democracy in the world, but... Uh, but what, you know, I'm a fascist, authoritarian, democratic fucking prick. Uh, but I'm not going to say a word to that fucking asshole Da Aung San Suu Kyi because I'm a closet misogynist. Isn't that the case here? Fucking toxic misogyny. That damn wimp senior general Ming online. Pathetic. It's a rivalry. Limp. Dick fucking Ming online. You're a sexless, worthyless prick. Sorry to be so frank. No one's ever in your heart. No one's ever in your face. Your wife are like cowtails to you. Where are you, Mrs. Ming online? Where are the women in Burma? They're the ones who stand up. It's a feminist inspired revolution. Women against the impotence of these fucking masculine toxic dicks with guns. I got a gun, okay? I used to play football. I played basketball. Okay, the other team brings out guns. Now, you got the rules wrong, dude. This is not a war. This is a sport called the best team wins. Democracy is a nonviolent expedition of the best team wins based on the people's fucking vote, dude. You got voted down. Show some dignity, Mr. Ming online. No, I've got the gun and I'm going to kill anyone who uses the word regime or junta. Where in the fuck did you go to school, dude? I mean, I'm sorry to be so blunt today, but it's like, I'm tired of fucking participating in the wine yawn of Western pathetic response, like an upholding the dignity of my Buddhist nobility. Fuck, man, where's your fucking rad 
Where's your deep, deep street hip hop? Where's your radical rap? No wonder Burma, the youth right now are so fucking violated. The pink and the blue and the trans, the spike, the rad, the death metal, the rappers, the poets, the artists, they're fucking pissed. It's a revolution of being pissed off. And I think there's something to be said here for the musicality of piss off. I mean, I wish I could speak to the UN like Greta did. I wish I could speak to ASEAN. I wish I could speak to you, Ming Online. I wish this fucking video would go viral. 10 million views in 45 seconds. I wish this was translated into every language in the world. Where's your fucking response, man? Burma is a child of democracy run by a wonderful population of people that voted in democratically to keep evolving the beauty and the sanctity of rule of law and the role of democracy and blending into the global family of the elevation of universal human rights. And dickhead Senior General Ming online with his big daddy, Utan Shui, and all of your guns from Premier C and from Mr. Putin, and you go bang, 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 shut up, boys and girls, go back to being fucking animals. I want my loot, I want my guns, and I want to masturbate to my fucking sexual fantasies. I have no regard for intimacy. I haven't even touched my wife in 20 years. You guys, I mean, I mean, I am thinking that it needs to be a Tantra-oriented revolution. It's a sexless, toxic, masculine, bullshit environment of occupation. You guys have no fucking clue of intimacy, of love, of sexuality, of kissing. The whole country should just kiss each other and show these fucking pricks what it means to be in love. I mean, I don't know what a creative response would be here, but it's just disgusting. The ASEAN response. I mean, the normalization of bullshit, right? The normalization of violence has been talked about ad nauseum. The normalization of toxic masculinity. The, the normalization of diplomacy. The normalization of who's got the biggest weapons and it's got the most polished badges, like, you know, like I couldn't get over my Boy Scout cult. What? Like pathetic. You guys were at the back of the room where I grew up. You didn't even know how to talk to a woman guy. You didn't even know how to masturbate. You didn't even know how to kiss, but you didn't have the fucking balls to basically ask some of the more integrated guys and boys, how do you do it? bad parenting, but it's all helter-skelter. I'm tired of giving peace a chance. What would I do if I were in the streets of Burma right now? I don't know about you, man, but I'll tell you, you know, when I was at the University of Virginia, you know, I wanted to be a fucking U.S. president. Thomas Jefferson started the university, and then there was Kent State, and dickhead Nixon killed our own fucking brothers and sisters. Four dead in Ohio. Only four dead. And it blew my fucking heart wide open. I don't want to belong to the cult of the American, you know, pseudo-democracy that's a totalitarian military you know, imperialistic army killing our own fucking students. I said, no way, man. I want out of this bullshit fucking imperialistic country. I can imagine the outrage of the people in Burma right now, killing the people again and again, dick. Where are they going to go? I was in the jungles of Burma when the 88 revolution, they fled because you kill them at close range. You were willing to kill your own kids Blind obedience to the dogma. It all comes back to the Dhamma. Alan, no wonder you became a monk. Samsara's nature is one of 
the first noble truth, the truth of shit is. Suffering is a universal reality caused by the blindness of toxic masculine pricks with guns. Dong San Suu Kyi offered the world an integrated spirituality with activism, feminine inspired, using the power of her heart, inspiring the masses in Burma to rise up with human voice, a revolution of consciousness and dignity and loving kindness. I know these people, they rock. They're amazing in the fucking masculine military in Burma run by these pricks. Oh, a woman, a good looking, sexy woman who's educated, who wants to basically look at us as a friend, not an enemy. Uh, I think my, I don't know what to do, honey. There's a good looking woman here. I kind of like want to bond with, but I have grown into the conditioning that I should hate women like this. She's too kind of comfortable in her body, in her mind. She's very educated. I'm insecure. I got to attack her. I've got to kill her. I've got to rape her. Uh, that's Burma, right? I'm not a psychiatrist, but it's a very obvious psychology. Masculine, toxic, you know, limp, short, small dick syndrome. Sorry, senior general. With the powerful woman, the feminine, the divine feminine. It's an uprising of the feminine with boys and girls that want to participate in human life in a sacred way to create, to have families, to have security, to develop art and poetry and music and dance. Your country is alive with the Dhamma, with Catholicism, with Christianity, with Judaism. You have a rich, multifaceted diamond in your country, sir, and you treat it like shit. Someone needs to throw something right into your heart called a high dose of a, you know, of a placebo psychedelic. Blow your fucking mind wide open, right? Clockwork orange like eyes shut wide open, forced to watch evil to your favorite music. And all of a sudden you're going, oh, I want to come. I hate this. I, ah, 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 ah. How do you fucking remove this deep petrified stupidity in you, dude? Sorry to go off on you like this. You know, I'm in a rant state because I'm fucking outraged by what you're doing to the people of Burma. You're doing it to me. You're doing it to every fucking freedom loving democratic girl and boy in the world now and not even born because you're fucking stupid and people around you aren't willing to tell you the truth and you're protected by your fucking attitude and your privilege and your little dick and your guns and your boys that you've indoctrinated. I'm sorry to be so blunt with you, dick, but you fucked up, man, and you should correct it. Get on TV and apologize and retire. No one's willing to say it like it is in this world. The normalization of bullshit called diplomacy. Azion, shame on you. President Biden, shame on you. The leaders of the EU, shame on you. Modi, shame on you. Act. Act with fucking decency. These boys and girls want freedom. They want democracy. Stand up to China. It's obvious their Belt and Road Initiative is conquest. It's a different type of warfare. They gave them the guns. They give them the money. They give them the fentanyl. We've got more fentanyl in America than U.S. citizens. Where did it come from? Genocidal Premier Xi Jinping. Uh, put, oh, really? All that kind of addiction that leads to suicide and violence comes from that prick? Yep, all of it. Same thing in Burma. They got a big oil pipeline right into the Bay of Bengal, the Andaman Sea. Gas and oil owned exclusively by 
Senior General Ming online. Put it all together, the guns, the fentanyl, the labor, and the oil, the gas, the Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, and China is saying it's just a cabinet reshuffle? <laughs> I mean, Alan, you don't understand global politics? Bullshit, man. Better than you. What are you suggesting? Invasion? No. Get those bullshit aircraft carriers out of the South China Sea. Leave one. Put it into the sea, the Andaman Sea, and show up for the people of Burma. Give them something to stand on that isn't an isolated, mute response of psychobabble diplomacy called, uh, 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 I don't even want to repeat the nonsense that I'm hearing. It's just pure BS. So may I invite you, digital activist, multiply yourself. Let this video go worldwide. Let it go viral. Send it to the White House. Send it to all capitals, all dignitaries, all representatives of the United Nations. Let it go into Burma. Let it go around the world. Let it circulate. We are many. We are strong. We have strong voices. We support the people of Burma. How will you support the people of Burma? Speak out. Be outraged, like Martin Luther King said. For every fucking black head you are willing to crush, white man, we've got a hundred other girls and boys willing to have their heads bashed. That's a bold ass statement. And they're doing it in Burma. They're shooting live fire. That military is saying, you keep coming out onto the streets, we're going to kill you. What? You've imprisoned my friend, Da Aung San Suu Kyi. She may spend the rest of her life behind your gulag, dude. Where are you, world? She's one of us. The president snapped up 500 other people. You're shooting boys and girls in the street with guns from China and Russia and Ukraine and Turkey and Israel. Cease and desist. Show up. Bring the Nimitz or the Roosevelt into the CU the Andaman Sea. Bring those people. Give money to the people of Burma. Give food. Give moral support, military support, and tell the military in Burma, which is now a declared terrorist organization, you continue to violate the people. You violate us. Red line to the terrorist group in Burma, to Premier Xi, to Putin. Enough is enough. We are the free world. Let that aircraft attack group be a representative of the free world. I grew up in a military family. I say it all the time. My mom and dad were proud to be veterans of World War II. We fought tooth and nail all the time because in my era, the Vietnam War was wrongful. We felt. And my dad and mom would always say, World War II was rightful. America is larger than Nixon. You must understand there comes a time where you make a stand. You make sacrifices for the greater good. President Biden, ASEAN, the EU, Australia, Canada, this is the time to make a decision for the free world. Burma is the next Tibet. Burma is the next Hong Kong. It does not look that way. I am not an alarmist. Do not trust under any circumstance the genocidal premier of China or Russia. Do not fear them. What they fear is, a, is, is someone who's got stealth and stands and teaches a lesson in freedom. And that's what the people of Burma right now are playing on the stage of the globe. Freedom in action. We cannot afford to let Burma go. We cannot let Burma go down the road for another 30 to 40 to 50 years of dominant military dictatorship. It is wrong. Get it, free world. Get it, ASEAN. 
get it EU, get it United Nations, bring peacekeepers into the city streets today. Screw Napidaw. Who cares? Who's going to slap your wrists? Get off your complicit bullshit apathy. Put our military into moral use. I'm not advocating, you know, the use of guns and weapons and jets and missiles yet. Sorry to just lose it, but I don't know what else to do. Been in lockdown here in LA. Wrote a book, Extinction X Rated, to excavate through my own self psychology why stay alive and what to do to make good on the promise of being human in this world. I've got a daughter, 14 years old. Her friends, her children, if she has children. The future of life is at stake. China wants global domination and it's not going to be pretty. And I don't want to live like a slave. I don't want my daughter to live like a slave. I don't want to be a serf. I don't want to be livestock. I have seen it. I have studied the Holocaust. It is beyond comparison. Incomparable evil. And yes, it's happening again on our watch. The Dalai Lama said 25 years ago, if we don't act now, there'll be no Tibet to save. And that was already after 50 years of genocide. Imagine being embodied to move yourself. I'm telling yourself, Dad, I've got to immolate myself because it's the only act of conscience that I've got to live in freedom. My death may light a fire in the minds of others to act for the future of life in my country. 200 immolations in Tibet, unnoticed by the free world. A footnote by some media. Despicable. Did Greta have to stand in front of the United Nations live on CNN and light herself on fire? There is no future to this world that includes you and your children. Extinction means all of us, all of nature. Get over your fetish for consumerism and profit. Get over your problem, your narcissism. Okay, how do you do it, right? How do you change the mind of a psychopath? a person clinically evaluated as devoid of conscience. <laughs> Throw them into church, put acid in their mind, have them pray, have them strip, have them take a hot tub, have their bodies touched to awaken to go through the, the, the fossilization of their toxic masculinity? Is it just a male issue? Pretty much right now in Burma. Yes, most of them are married. But the military is driven by men with guns and they're being ordered to shoot people, their own people, shooting me, my daughter. They're shooting democracy. How do we create change? Sanctions, bullshit, man. Statements, bullshit. Not even okay. We want action. And if you will not take action, what are we to do except act, 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 act. And may I beg of you, pray of you, send this video around. I can't do any more with the intensity of my voice today. I don't know what else is there to say. Share it. Translate it. We are the people. It's back in our hands. Okay, get it, Alan. Government's not going to do it. They're just sold out profit puppets for the mediocrity of, you know, it just sickens me when I think of, I hate to say it, but I'll say it. You know, I just, 
I recently watched a video of Biden. I mean, it's been a hopeless election, both sides just tangled and mired in delusions. But I watched his impassioned speech of trying to encourage his fellow senators to attack Iraq knowingly that it was bullshit information he was acting on. It was like, and I'm thinking like a million civilians died and continued to die in a country decimated by an American invasion that we still can't extract. And it's like, we call it a war. It's called a terrorist act. Terrorism, American terrorism. And you're wondering, Alan, why he doesn't act now? How do you rehabilitate that level of proclivity? Sometimes it pisses me off I became a monk rather than a president. I wish I could have, should have. In retrospect, you've got your voice no matter what. All it takes is your wife, Dr. Jill, getting into your husband's mind and saying, hey, dude, it's either me or you act. I'm leaving this marriage. Do Aung San Suu Kyi is my sister. The people of Burma are my family. And your dedication to Wall Street and the oligarchs and Silicon Valley and your own impetus, your impotence, I am no longer going to be complicit with, dude. I did an ayahuasca ceremony and I got in touch with my repressed trauma, okay? Cliché, cliché. Those are the people that need to do the fucking medicine, not the good people of the world. They're the ones who need to do psilocybin assisted psychotherapy for fucking sickos in politics. Why aren't all the plant medicine people, all the psychedelic people in the world demanding that politicians as a mandatory act before you can run for office, you must have your fucking hull check for cracks, dude. It seems that all the, the psychos rise to the top of politics and religions. Priests, predators, pedophiles, politicians, popes. Come on, man. Where are the activists around the world? Politics and psychedelics go hand in hand. Let's demand that our leaders at the United Nations go to fucking plant medicine ceremonies and snap out of your coma of complicity, complicity with genocide. Is this like humor or satire? No. How else do you get through words, diplomacy, politeness? Meanwhile, uh, what happened to the planet? Young Greta's at the front of the world and say, well, guess what? Extinction happened. Uh, we didn't get it right. David Suzuki, the great environmentalist from Canada, years back said, you know, we are like a car headed towards a brick wall of self-annihilation. And we're arguing over where to sit in the car or what should be listened to on the radio or if you're a spiritual person, Om Namah Shivaya, you know, I'm chanting as I'm going headlong into extinction. Or I'm, I'm being mindful of myself driving. <laughs> Hello, put the fucking brakes on, man, and do it differently. Do it differently. Interrupt the habit of stupidity, the lava flow of nonsense. Da Aung San Suu Kyi thinks this way. U Win Tain thinks this way. I have been with these boys and girls, these men and women. They are savants of the soul. I know them like my own family. U Tin U, the senior most member of the revolution in Burma, 92 years old, the former general under Ne Win, the father of Tan Shui, who appointed Ming online. I knew. Prime Minister Unu, I lived in his room. He started the monastery that I lived in. He brought 
Mahasi Seda, my teacher from the, the hinterlands in northern Burma into Rangoon. Fifteen people practiced mindfulness meditation in the 40s under his guidance. Over two million today in Burma have practiced in that one center alone. There's 660 centers times thousands more around the world. Mindfulness, Satipatthana, came from Myanmar. Da Aung San Suu Kyi introduced the word metta in action. It was her that said hope in action, love in action. Otherwise, it's fantasy love, she said. Look in our book together in 1995, 1996. Very prescient. U Ching is so rad. He was senior to Tan Shui. He was a theatrical, comedic, satirist, literary savant who abandoned the Tamada in Burma because it was dysfunctional. And he took up solidarity with Da Aung San Suu Kyi and U Tin U and U Win Tin and U Win Tain. And they led a nonviolent revolution using intellect, literature, conscience. Burma has that root. Why did Baklav Havel jump on board with these people? They are from the same ilk. We have so much to learn from these people, but they're imprisoned and dead. A new generation is being born there. Pathetic Modi of India, pathetic President Biden, pathetic ASEAN, pathetic Justin Trudeau, Pathetic EU, pathetic Australia, pathetic, pathetic, pathetic. Send in the aircraft attack group to the Andaman Sea. Give our military men and women the moral nutrient to finally stand up for why they have committed their lives to the defense of freedom to the elevation of democracy, a dignified army, a dignified military. I grew up that way. Everyone in my circle, I lived in the area where the largest military bases in the world were established. Norfolk, Virginia, Virginia Beach, Virginia. I grew up with jets, aircraft carriers, battleships, I kept one thing from my father, his medals, his uniform. Before I gave up my flat, I kept it on a mannequin so I could see my father. I never knew that I would understand the importance of what he would share with me so repeatedly growing up in that family. There are times when you make a stand, Alan, that's America. That's our military. Mr. Biden, get those military people out of Washington. It's an embarrassment to you and to our great country. Put moral energy into action. Send that attack aircraft group to the Andaman Sea immediately, sir. Show up as the final statement today, as the leading democratic country in the world, I pray you hear this, put our military into moral ethical position to support the good people of Myanmar in their evolution of democracy, in their revolution of conscience, and show the terrorist organization occupying Burma right now, run by this guy, Ming Online, that you mean moral, military, ethical business. Feed the people, house the people, give them medical supplies, and if needed, you bring in UN peacekeeping forces. Show up. This is our family. This is our future. From my heart to yours, thank you. See you tomorrow.